In this video, we will take a data set like Uber, we will build a data model in fact and dimension format and write our transformation code in Python. This code will be deployed on compute instance on Google Cloud where we will install Mage which is an open source modern data pipeline tool. We will load our data onto the BigQuery that is in data warehouse and create our final dashboard. Hey guys, welcome back to the video. And in this video, we will be working on modern data engineering project on Uber data set. So without wasting time, let's get started and let's start understanding our architecture diagram. So this is what the architecture diagram really looks like. We will have our data stored onto the Google Cloud storage. We will understand about all of these services as we go forward, but this is where we will store our data, which is kind of like the object storage. Then we will write our transformation logic in Python and deploy our code onto the open source data pipeline tool, which is a mage. And after that, we will load our data onto the BigQuery, which is the data warehouse available on GCP. And then we will build our final dashboard onto the Looker Studio. So there are many different components available. So we will write our transformation logic. We will build a data model. We will understand the basics of GCP services and how to connect them together and build our final dashboard. So a lot of things to learn and I hope you enjoy this video so let's go to the next step these are the prerequisites so first of all you need to have the laptop and the stable connection because most of the code that we will be writing you will have to write it with myself and again we will be working on the google cloud so you need to have the access to it so everything you do you will be done on the laptop and you need to have the internet connection and you need to have the understanding of basics of python sql and jupyter notebook installed because uh, in this project, we will be mainly focusing on the operational side of the data engineering. So we will understand how to create data pipeline, data model, create dashboards and all of the other things. So I will not explain you the each and every step of the Python code. You need to have the basic understanding of it. And if you don't have it, I already have the courses available on Python and SQL. So you can just go to my website, uh, learn.data.withdarshil and you will find the Python for data engineering course. This is where you will learn everything about Python from start to end. And also in this course, you will get to do three different projects with the python and the same with the sql so i will put the link in the description so if you are interested you can go if you don't have the python knowledge then i will highly suggest you to you know get your basics clear so this is about the prerequisite you don't need to know anything else everything else i will explain you while we you know execute this project after that these are the gcp services we will be using so let's understand them one by one and you know what they really do so first is the google cloud storage now if you have worked with the AWS or any other cloud, so on AWS, it is S3, on Azure, it is Azure Blob, and on Google Cloud, this is a Google Cloud Storage, which is an object storage where you can store all of the different types of files. So all of the data that we get, we will store our files onto the Google Cloud Storage. All of the data that we get, we will store it onto the Google Cloud. Second is the compute engine is similar to the EC2 or VM onto Azure. So it is kind of like your online computer where you can write your code, deploy it and do other things. So we'll be deploying our mage instance onto the compute engine and then we will deploy our code on top of that. So we will create our data pipeline on mage. Then we have the BigQuery. BigQuery is a cloud-based data warehouse provided by the GCP. You can easily store your data, analyze and run large set of query using sql only so this is where we will write our basic sql query and try to analyze our data and at the end we have the looker studio earlier this used to be known as a data studio now they combine the looker and the data studio and created the new tool this is kind of like your bi tool you see in the market such as power bi tableau right this is similar to that where you can you know uh, create your dashboards visualize different components and publish it and share it with the user so these are the four services we will be mainly focusing on and we will also focus on the other services as we execute our project so let's talk about our open source data pipeline tool for transforming and integrating data so till now all of the projects that we have done on this channel we were mainly focusing on the cloud services but from now on i will try to integrate one new product which is kind of like the modern data engineering stack so that you can also get the idea of how this modern data stack works and how it is changing the industry so this time i have picked up the mage which is kind of like the open data pipeline tool earlier we had one more project which is kind of like the twitter data pipeline tool where we use the airflow now instead of airflow we will be using mage so mage is a similar to airflow but it has more functionality where the airflow lacks so you can go to the mage website and try to understand about this tool you can have the live tool and you can play with the demo and this tool is much more easier and interactive because this focuses on the core problem. So if you want to load your data, you can just get the code template and just load your data using API. Then if you want to transform your data, you can write your transform logic and load your data onto target location. You will get all of the code templates 
all you need to do is focus on writing your logic and everything will be handled by these modern data engineering tools so uh, again explore this tool by yourself if you want to know more about it but we will be you know building our project and you will get to know about this tool as we go forward in this video so the next thing i want to focus on is giving you the basic understanding of the fact and dimension table because once we get our data set we want to convert our flat file into the fact and the dimension table so what are the fact and dimension table fact table generally contains the quantitative measures or the metrics used for the analysis now what do we mean by the metrics or the quantitative measure so to understand this concept better let's take the example of any e-commerce platform so let's say if you are working in an amazon so inside the amazon the key metrics will be let's say the total number of products that got shipped today total number of orders that we received today total number of uh, return product okay so these are the quantitative measures and this gives us the overall picture about what is happening so generally we put all of these numerical or the transactional value inside the fact table so it mainly contains the high cardinality and the changing frequency to understand the revenue order numbers all of these things are keep changing as we receive more and more inputs from the user so generally we put all of this information inside the fact table now on the other hand we have the dimension table dimension table mainly focusing on the description based attributes so what are the description base such as the product name product description all of these things are static and do not change for the longer period of time so instead of putting those information inside the fact table we will put them onto the dimension table and join them based on the keys whenever we need so let's take and let's understand this by the example so that you guys get the better understanding so order table will have all of the factual information so as you can see it has first order id this is the primary key and after that we have the foreign key which is connecting to all of the different dimension tables and then we have the sum of the columns such as quantity and amount so these are the factual columns and these are like the transactional or the quantitative attributes that keeps changing the amount and the quantity of any orders will keep changing and then we have the dimension table such as customers so customers have their first name last name date of birth email these things do not change and if we put this onto the let's say fact table uh, it will create a lot of duplicates so we don't want to put that so we just create the new table and store our customer information and whenever we need to pull the actual customer information we just join it based on the customer id and we can get that same thing with the dates stores and the product we just created the different dimension table and whenever we need the information about this we can use the foreign key and join the table so this is the basics about it but for now i just wanted to give you the brief overview about these concept because once we reach there you will have better understanding about it so we understood the basic concept required to execute this project now before we go forward i just want to convey that while executing this project you will face many different errors just to record this video it took me like five to six hours straight and i faced a lot of different errors while while i was executing this project so when you're executing this project you are likely to face errors but all i want to say is that don't get discouraged so if you face the error then don't get discouraged you can go on to google you can go on to stack overflow you can go on to chat gpt and try to understand what kind of error you are facing and solve it by there the more errors you solve by yourself the more you learn and if you face any error and if you encounter the solution by yourself then put that onto the comment section so that if someone else faces the same error he can just read the comment section and get the understanding about it so try to help the community while you are executing this project so one more thing before you go forward make sure you hit the like button and if you are new here then don't forget to hit the subscribe button because i get a lot of views on my project videos but most of the people don't even hit the subscribe button so i will highly appreciate if you click on that subscribe button and without wasting time let's get started so let's start the execution of our project by understanding our data set now this data set is similar to uber ola lyft the like online cab sharing platforms so yellow and green taxi trip records it includes fields such as pick up and drop date times pick up and drop locations trip distances itemized fare rate types payment types driver reported passenger counts and many more so this is kind of like the data you will find in most of the cap sharing platform so these are the basic columns available on this website now you will find a lot of different information you can go and read about it i will put the link in the description about this data set so here's the data is available from 2009 to 2023 so you can have this large big data and try to process it but for this tutorial project we will just use the sample of this data and we will try to work with that and as you go forward and if you want to implement by yourself you can just replace the data and use all of this data according to your requirement and try to build your own project so you can find all of the information about this data set on this platform only but what we are interested in is understanding the what this data contains and what each and every column means and for that we will go to the data dictionary you will find the data dictionary most of the time when you're working in any company data dictionary or data catalog is all about the information about the data set so 
over here as you can see we have like column names and the description available for that so when you're working in any company you will have this kind of information available if they have the good documentation so uh, if you're working with the new table and if you want to understand what each and every column means you can just go to the data dictionary try to understand it and then go forward with that so this is the similar case we have the data dictionary available so as you can see we have the vendor id vendor id is basically the third party provider who provides all of these records so we have two vendors the creative mobile technologies and Veniphone. then we have the pickup date time and the drop date time just by reading the name we can understand what this column means so we have like the pickup date time where the trip actually started and then the drop date time then we have the passenger count it's basically how many passenger were available in the vehicle and this is reported by the driver then we have the trip distances like from the pickup location to, to the top location what was the distance uh, then we have the location id of the pickup and the drop location id this is basically the location of the pickup and top then we have the rate code rate code is basically the final rate code in effect at the end of the trip so they have this kind of the mechanism uh, in their application that different passengers will get charged based on the different rate code so we they have the standard rate jfk group ride negotiated fare so you don't really need to understand what each and every rate code means all you need to understand that what this column contains so as we can understand that rate code columns contain different rate code based on that a uh, passenger will get charged so that is the only information you need to know to execute this project if you are working in any company then you might need to know about each and every rate code and what they means because it has the final impact on the business but for now just for this tutorial purposes you just need to understand what this column contains and what kind of data it has then we have the store and forward flag this flag indicates whether the trip record was held in the vehicle memory before sending it to vendor aka store and forward because the vehicle did not have the connection to the server so many of the time because of the internet connection we might have to store our data inside our local memory and then whenever the internet connection is available we upload that data onto server so this store and forward flag means that so if it is why that means uh, there was an internet connection issue and we stored our data inside the memory and if it is no then we were able to directly upload the data onto server so this is basically about that then we have the payment type so different payment type available such as credit card cash no charge so as you can understand it just by reading the name we will get to know that what all of those column means then we have all of the other columns such as fair amount extras improvement charges tip amount toll amount so all of these are like the payments and the number of charges extra charges occurred during the trip so this data is pretty straightforward to understand all of these columns so again you can spend more time understanding this data and what they mean for now we will just read this data and we will go forward with that and we will try to build a data model out of it so what do you really need to do i have this data available in my folder so as i go uh there is a folder such as uber data pipeline and this data is available uber data uber underscore data csv so i've just picked the sample of data if i open this you guys can see it uh let me just open this this is the data available as you can see we have the vendor id pickup date time drop date time passenger count trip distances this is basically pickup latitude longitude rate code id so all of the column that we read in the dictionary it is available inside the data so this is our sample data now we will try to work with this data and see what we can build out of it so all you need to do is go and open your jupyter notebook now again this is the prerequisite we already talked about so you should have all of those things installed in your pc all you have to do is click on to new and click on to your python 3 kernel and it will open this now we have to import some of the packages because we want to read this data so for that what we will do we will just write import pandas as pd so that we can read our file inside our code so once you import your packages then we can read our data such as df is equal to pd dot read underscore csv data slash over csv and if i did this i will see all of the data available i'll just print the first five rows as you can see vendor pickup date time drop date time and all of the columns available inside my data now what i really want to do i want to convert this flat file into data model structure we already discussed about this but let's revise it again so that we can understand it so what we discussed previously is that we want to convert our flat file into this kind of format we have like the fact table and then we might have the dimension table fact table contains mainly the transactional value or the high cardinality that keeps changing such as id revenue Kind of numbers all of those values keeps changing and the dimension table generally contains the descriptive values such as name age 
all of these things do not change generally in this case as we already understood we have the order so we have the quantity amount that keeps changing but we have some other dimension information available such as city country name description of the product they do not change so we will keep all of those things inside the dimension table and we will keep the fact information in the middle which is the fact table so we will try to convert our uh, this table which is the flat hierarchy into the fact and dimension table format this is called this is generally what we call as a dimensional modeling and we will do this using one online tool available which is called as a lucid chart now this is just a one file when you're working in the real world you might have like multiple tables multiple files so that time you will have to spend a lot of time understanding how to build the fact and dimension table but for the sake of this tutorial we will just use this one file and we will try to get as much as out of it so what you need to do you just need to go and log into lucid chart and now this is the url lucid.app okay i will put the link in the description if you don't know about it now this tool is free to use so you can create three different documents at the initial stage but if you want to create more then you can pay for it if you don't want to use lucid chart then we have one more thing available which is called as a draw.io so this is provided by google and again this is completely free so you can use this also but i will go with the lucid chart because it is more user friendly so all you have to do is click on to new and click on to this blank document and this will open completely new canvas so once you see something like this you can just name your document such as uber data model and i'm done okay so this is my blank canvas and you will see something like this so we will start converting our uh this data frame into more fact and dimension tables so we can start our dimensional modeling by understanding what will be our dimension tables and what will be our fact table for the sake of this tutorial we will try to create multiple dimension table even the information that could have been inside the fact table we will put that into dimension table so we can understand how it actually looks in the real world so we'll try to replicate the similar scenarios so just write the data model over here and you will see the entity relationship you can just pull this particular thing uh the second column and this kind of like the entity diagram First, we will create our fact table. So for, for the fact table, you just write fact table. And the first column we will put is our vendor ID. And this is our primary key for the fact table only. So this is the start of our fact table. Now, the second thing is we need to understand what can be our dimension table. So we have the date time columns available. So for that, all you need to do is again, pull one more entity table and just put date time dim as the information over here. And we can just start putting the columns name. So, so the first is we need to put the ID. So we will create the ID of such as date time ID and this will be our primary key. We can have the primary key reference over here. So this will be our foreign key, which is date time ID. Yeah, as you can see it over a foreign key date time ID and the primary key of the date time ID. So we will have the unique information available inside the dimension table and we can reference that inside the fact table. Then we need to do is we need to put the column name which is our pickup date time so we will put both of the pickup and the drop date time inside this date time dimension table but you can put them into different date time table so we, you can create the pickup date time dimension table and the drop date time dimension table according to your requirement uh it's up to you again the data modeling or the dimension modeling is not a one-time process where you just create the model and you're done with it you have to keep iterating and you have to keep finding the improvement points so that you can improve it so i will just show you one way and we will just create it for the ones but you can improve this dimension model as per the requirement and by understanding more about it so this is our pickup date time and then we can have more columns and we can try to extract more information from this column so we can have such such as like pickup r uh, i will add more uh, rows inside this then i can have the information about such as pick up day then pick up month then pick up year pick weekday okay so this is all of the information that we can extract you can just remove this you don't need it okay and then we can do the same for the drop also so i'll just copy this drop date time name i can just paste it over here and i can do the same instead of pick i will just write drop I can just write drop day i'll have to add the more rows drop day and then drop month then what do we have 
drop here and drop week day okay so i'll just remove this 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 and this and i'll reduce the row count so this is what our dimension table looks like right now so we have like date time date time dimension table available and these are the different columns we have the date time id which is our primary key and we can just use this and just join it over here okay so we can just uh join the date time id based on the date time uh field available inside the dimension table of the date time so this is the first one thing you can again uh add the header over here so this looks good i'll just do this so we can understand this in much better way and now we have the fact dimension table available then we have like the passenger count now passenger count can be put onto the fact table only because this is kind of like the transactional value that keeps changing but for this tutorial purposes we will put the passenger count and the trip distance inside the different dimension table so that we can understand how the actual join works and how these tables are created okay so in real world you might have to put this into the fact table but just for the learning purposes we will put this in the dimension table just to understand the dimension table concept so again pull the column so what we have is uh let's say passenger count ding uh, let me just make it bigger the first field is our passenger count id this will be our primary key and the second will be actual passenger count the information so this is the data let me just remove this and let's just reduce the row count this is the primary key and let me just not this we just add the id over here passenger count id this is my foreign key let me make it bigger and i'll just put this over here something like this okay so we have the passenger count uh, this is directly connected to passenger count id same thing we will do for the trip distance okay so we will have trip distance dimension table i will put trip distance id and the actual trip distance this is my primary key i can add one more row here let's just add multiple rows and let's just copy this this is paste over here this is my foreign key and i can just connect it yeah, over here same way we have other information available such as pickup longitude and latitude so we can create one table for the pickup and the second table is for the drop la longitude and latitude so we can create the similar tables you just have to pull this over here let's make it a little bit bigger first is our pickup location dimension so i'll just put this something like this pickup location then we have the pickup location id okay on the column name is the pickup latitude and pickup longitude okay all, all i'm doing is just copy pasting the column names this is our primary key okay, this is not in key this is not a key and just just put pickup over here and this is my foreign key i can just join it over here okay same way i can just copy this and i can do the same for the drop so instead of pickup all you have to write is drop drop location dimension drop location id drop location latitude and we have drop location latitude i uh, can you can just add this location over here and i can just connect it over here you know you can uh, make it a little bit better to read so let me just format this properly i'll just put this over here i'll just put it over here like this and let's just format this just select all of those and add the header so this looks good so we have the pickup location drop passenger count trip distance and the date time then let's just look at some other things such as rate code again rate code is the kind of like the descriptive value we had so let's just create uh one more dimension for the rate code so i have this so first is the rate code dimension let me just zoom this then rate code id 
this is the primary key id and this is the actual rate code id so this is the column value and we will have the rate code name also available because inside the dictionary we we can see that for the one is it is a standard rate second is the jfk so what we will do we will just put the rate code name also we will have rate code name something like this so that uh, while writing the code we will assign the actual value to the rate code also so that we will have more information about this also so let me just add the header uh, i'll just add the rate code id over here and i'll just put it over here something like this this is my primary key this is my actual data okay and this is my foreign key this is my foreign key okay so as you can so as you can understand what we are trying to do is we are just picking one column and we are just trying to put that into dimension table and create some unique id in the dimension table so that we can connect it to the fact table so this is about that and the second thing is now uh, let me just go through data we have the payment type so we can do the same thing for the payment type also so let me just copy this i'll just copy the payment type dimension this is my payment type id this is my actual payment type and this is this will be my payment type name okay and i can just add payment type id over here and just join it and it looks good so this is what my dimension table and the fact table looks like this uh this is payment type id okay okay looks good this is my foreign key now all of the other columns we can just put them inside our fact table so these are the transactional values such as uh, fair amount uh, fair amount uh, let me just add more rows here then we have extra then we have mta tax tip amount put it over here tolls amount implement surcharge and total amount and i'll just reduce one column count i'll just remove this key okay so this is what our dimension the first step looks like and this is what we will work and this is what we will try to convert our data using the programming code so again uh, this is not a one-time process we have to keep iterating it when you're working in the real world and all these two can be inside the fact table also we don't really have to create the dimension table but just for the sake of this tutorial i have created this so that you guys can understand it and how this dimension table actually works so i hope you got the idea of how to create the dimension table by yourself and you understood what the process looks like behind the scene if you did like it then don't forget to hit the like button to this video and let me know in the comments just by writing that i reached and i completed the dimension modeling part so that i will know that you actually reached to this part because most of the people might have just given up in between so now we will go forward and we will try to write the code to convert this flat file into the dimension modeling so steps are pretty straightforward just first we will just check our date time if it is in the proper format or not so as you can see this pickup date time in the top time is in the object format so what we need to do is we need to convert this object into actual date time so if you already know a little bit of pandas uh you will know we have the function available which is called is the two date time where we just need to pass our date time column and if i run this and if i do the df dot info again you will see this is inside the date time so if it is inside the date time format then we can only extract the information about such as hours days uh you know a uh, week of the day and all of the other things so this really needs to be in the date time format then only we can go forward with that so once you have all of this information available then we can go forward and we can just start writing our code so the first thing is actually dropping the duplicate so we can just do something like this date time dim is equal to tf of this column okay comma this column uh, we, we are just selecting two columns dot drop duplicates i just want to drop the duplicates and i want to reset let's just do this first 
and let's just see what the output it gives and you will see we have some random index available over here so i can just write dot reset index drop is equal to true this is the panda syntax and as you can see we will have the proper index from 0 to the number of rows we have available and these are the two columns so this will give us the non duplicate value so what i can just do is i can just assign this to this date time dim and we will have the two columns available inside this column and then we can start extracting more information so sorry for the interruption while editing this video i realized that i made a huge mistake in a code so this is the part where we drop duplicates from these different columns this should not be like that because this is the wrong logic so instead i have modified our logic and created the new code you can find that onto my github profile so what you can do is that you can just watch video as it is but instead of using the code that i've used in the video you can use the modified code that i've provided on to my github because this code makes much more sense where we are dropping the duplicates at the start on the entire data level and then we are assigning some uh, primary key onto this df creating all of our fact and dimension table according to that so what you can do you can just watch this video as it is understand the code and understand the logic i'm trying to convey then once you are done with the code writing part you can just go to the github and check the new code and use that code instead of using this code again we are not mainly focusing on getting the transformation logic correct because we are just working with the sample data because it doesn't really matter in this case if our data is correct or not because we are not finding any analysis at the end but i just wanted to highlight this mistake because if you go into in the real world you should not make the similar mistake so sorry for this and you can continue with this video thank you so you can extract all of those information just by using the pandas function so what do we have date time dim i can just create the new column let's just pick hours as per our data model one is first is our pick r so i'll just do that and is equal to date time dim i will just use the pick up date time and i'll just use dot r if i run this uh it's not r it's dot dt dot r if i run this if i run this you will see the it extracted the r value which is like the 0, 06 0, 0 over here so we got the r just like this you can extract all of the other, other information again i already have the code so i won't waste time but i will suggest you guys to write all of this code by yourself so that you can get as much as hands in practice so if i just run this and if i just run this right now you can see i will have the pick and then we have the pick our pick day month year and the weekday same thing we will do just for the drop so i already have the code available so i'm just going to copy this and if i run this if i run this so we have the pick cards and we have the drop are available inside this we are not doing anything complicated all we are doing is just uh resetting the index and dropping the duplicates and then we are just extracting our day month year and weekday and assigning it to the new column for the pickup and for the drop once you do this then you can assign the index so we have something called list like this if i do index this will print all of the index so from the zero to the number of rows available so what we can do is we can do something like this date time dim our uh data frame name is equal to uh the primary key we wanted is the date time id so we can just write date time id and if i run this you will see we have date time id available which is kind of like the primary key for this dimension dimension table and we have all of the other information so we can just order these columns in the proper format so all you have to do is just do something like this uh, date time dim date time dim same and just put the proper order of the columns as you can see it over here we want the first date time then we have want the pickup pick us pick day and all of the other columns into the proper order if i do this and if i run this and you will see we have the date time available we have the pickup date time then actual value and the hours days month year weekday same for the drop now if you are finding it difficult then i will again suggest you to have the solid python understanding because uh, to execute this project i'm not going to teach you python so if you're not able to understand what i'm really doing then I, I have the course available on python for data engineering you can go and watch it it is really important that you understand the basics of python because i can't teach python every time i do a tutorial because this is kind of like the advanced uh, data engineering project so i can't go and touch the every basic level of the python but you should understand it what i'm trying to do over here so just by reading the code you should be able to understand what i'm really trying to do so 
so as you can see so as you can see we just created our first date time dim table as per the structure so we have all of the columns available inside this data frame now we can again repeat the same process for all of the other uh, information so i'll just copy the code and as you can see i'm doing the same for the passenger count we have i'm just dropping the duplicates resetting the index assigning the index to the id column and then i'm just uh, reordering this information uh, as per the dimension model that we have created i'm doing the same for the uh, passenger count and the trip distance if i run this and if i print this you will see i have the passenger count id available and the actual number of passenger available same for the trip distance if i print this you will see i have the trip distance id which is kind of like the primary key and the distance of uh, the actual distance of the trip now so we have created these three then we have available this so i'll just put the code and try to explain you what we are doing over here this one is a little bit trickier uh, to understand but it's not that complicated so as you can see it over here what we are doing is uh, when we created our data model we had only one information available inside our uh, the flat file which is the rate code id we wanted to create the two new new columns which is the rate code id we will just assign the index and then we want the name so we don't have the name available inside this data frame as you can see it over here we don't have any name but we have the name available away available in the dictionary so we can use this and assign the name inside our data frame so what you need to do we just need to create the dictionary of it so i will just use the one and i will just assign the standard rate as per the data dictionary available so i will just create the dictionary and i will just follow the same code i will drop the duplicates reset the index assign the index to the rate code id i will use the rate code name and map dot map function is used to map between the id available inside the data so these all of those id as you can see it over here one 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 and three will get assigned this new value which is the standard rate jfk and then we can just reorder it so if i run this and if i print this as you can see we will have the three columns one is the primary call primary key 0 1 2 3 4 5 one is the actual rate code and the rate code has the name also the standard rate jfk negotiated fare so we will have more data available inside our dimension table so this is the process you might use generally in the real world too that you might have the data available but you also have the understanding about this id what it means so you put the name of it inside the table so if someone comes and if someone reads this table they can understand what this id means or you can have create the new table also it's up according to your requirement so this is the read code same we have other information such as payment id and uh, let's say pickup and location pickup and drop location so i'll just do it for the pickup and drop location this is the same what we are doing is we are just dropping the duplicates for the pickup assigning the index and reordering it same thing i'm doing it for the drop and then i have the payment id same that we did for the record uh repeating the same thing for the payment also so one for the credit card second for the cash and then dropping the duplicates assigning the index mapping it and just reordering it so i have the payment type if i just run this you will see not this one dot head I have the payment id payment type and the payment type name okay so we, we just went systematically we just converted uh, our entire flat file into the multiple dimension table and the fact table so we have created all of our dimension table now what we need to do we need to create our fact table now to create the fact table what we need to do we need to join all of those multiple tables so as you can see we need to pull the fact table information and then we also need to pull the id column information so for that we will just use the column common column available between the two tables so this is the code this is what it looks like we're really doing is we are joining to df df is our actual uh information available the actual data frame and then we are joining all of the dimension table based on the common columns available between the two tables now this is not the ideal way again to join it because passenger account can be duplicated so we might not have the current join but for the sake of this tutorial just to understand the concept this is how it can work so we have the merge and we are joining the count d passenger count on the passenger count column then the trip distance on the trip distance actual column then the rate code dm on the rate code and let's just like this we are just merging all of these different uh, fact and dimension table and then we are trying to pick the information that we really want inside the fact table so as you can see vendor id date date time id passenger count trip distance and all of the other information we are just 
pulling from these different data frames. So what we are really doing is that first we are merging all of those columns based on the common columns available between two tables. So inside the actual DF we have the passenger count and inside the dimension table we also have the passenger count available. We extract it. So these are the common columns available. So we are just directly horizontally joining them and then we are just picking the information that we want to extract in, inside the fact table. So if I run this, if I do the head, you will see we will have like the vendor ID date time id passenger count trip distance rate code all of this information will be available over here just like the fact table that we created so this and this is same so as you can see it over here we have the vendor id date time id passenger count trip distance rate code id all of those information if i just remove this head you will see a lot of different information available and present over here so this is how we go from converting our flat file into the dimension model now in the real world you might have more columns to join now we just use one single flat file to you know understand all of this concept for tutorial purposes but in the real world you will have multiple tables and you can utilize this to make the better join and create the better dimension table so till now we have done everything on our local pc next step is we will uh, go and upload our data onto the google cloud storage and then we will deploy our transformation code that we have written over here inside the mage we will deploy the mage the data engineering tool onto the vm and then we will analyze our data onto BigQuery and create a dashboard at the end so this is the next step so you can take a break and then you can continue with this video so the first thing you need to do is go onto the google cloud console and create your account now you can just write on the google google cloud console and you will be redirected over here just click on it if you don't have the account you will have to create it now google provides 300 dollars for the free at the initial stage so they will ask you some basic information about your debit card or credit card and you can just fill those information they won't charge you so don't worry about getting charged because they provide 300 dollars for free at the initial stage so creation of the account is very simple if you have the google account then you can just create it within a minute okay so once you do that you will see something like this or you might see something like this okay so if you are on the welcome screen the first thing is you need to create your own project in my case i have the project called as a data with the shell but i can create new projects such as let's say um or you can put your name or you can just my test project or my test project something like this and you can just click on to create and this will create your own project over here okay so i'm gonna use my own project which is the data with the shell you can use your own project as per your requirement now once you have it then the second thing is we have on the architecture diagram which is the raw storage now this is on the google cloud storage so uh, i have the data available over here so what you can do is can just write google storage cloud storage over here and you will have all of the information available if you don't want to do that you can click on to this navigation and you will find a lot of different things available over here also so you can go over here you have the big query available uh, if you want you can just go to cloud storage and click over here this is your cloud storage and you will be redirected to this page so this is what it looks like this is the console of the cloud storage now if you have experience with the any other cloud platform such as azure or aws you will know on aws it is s3 and on azure it is cloud storage right this is a similar the cloud storage so over here i have the different buckets uh in this case i have we i've already created one bucket which is called as a uber data engineering project and that bucket we will use for this project now if you want to create your own bucket that is pretty simple you all you have to do is click on to this create button and you just write your bucket name so your bucket name should be unique across the google universe so uh, make sure you provide some unique name then you can just click on to continue let's say i provide over over data engineering project okay and just put my name so this makes it unique if i continue you can have the multi-region if you want to store data into multi-region if you want to uh, put data into single region so you can select any region that is uh, nearly available so i'll just use the ap south one mumbai location because this region is on the nearest region uh, based on my current location so you can choose the region based on uh, whatever region you are in then you can select the storage class i'll just go with the standard class they, there are multiple storage classes available uh, they have their own uh, access pattern and the uh, storage cost so uh, you can choose we don't have to worry about it then just click the continue continue and you can create it uh don't show this and enforce public access prevention you can untick this and click on to confirm because we want to make our data public so that we can access it in our code so this will 
uh, create our uh, bucket now i can just click on to upload files and i can just go on to my this data and i can just upload my uber csv so this will upload data onto this file and as you can see the file is uploaded so we were able to upload our single file onto this cloud storage now this is not public i want to make this data public so that i can directly get the url and i can access it in my code so in order to make it public all you have to do is click onto your file and click onto this three dotted icon so here you need to click on edit access and you are getting some error which is get cannot get the legacy acl file object when the uniform bucket level access is enabled so that basically means we have to go to the permission and we have switched to the fine grain access so instead of uniform which is basically ensures all of the access level from the im level we need to click on to find grain access and just click on click it on the save once you do that you can go to the object and you can click on to this three dots again click on to edit access add entry over here click on to public all users and just give the reader access okay once you do that just save it and this will generate some public urls so if i can click on this url if i copy and paste it on my uh url you will see it is able to directly download this particular file uh, from the storage only so we have our data available onto world storage so if you want you can directly use this url that i've created you don't have to create your own or upload your own file but if you want just for the learning purposes you can do that and make it public okay so this is the first step second step in our architecture diagram is we want to deploy the mage onto the the computer engine so that is pretty simple just again open this you will find the compute compute engine right click onto this and open in in the new tab if you don't find it you can always write the compute engine and you will get it over here also you can just right click it and open it on the new tab over here i already have an instance available but compute engine as we already discussed it is basically the online computer where you can uh you know do all of those things run your code store your files and stuff like that so click on to create instance okay uh give your instance name such as let's say uber data engineering project okay i'll just put my name then the region you can select any region that is near to you so in my case i will go with the uh, asia south mumbai okay uh, zone it can be default doesn't matter machine type we can keep it as it is which is the e2 and the medium we can just go to the standard which is available let's say 4 cpu and 16 gb memory i'll go with the standard you can select whatever you want uh, because you have the 300 dollars credits available so uh, it's up to you what you want to choose you won't get charged anyway so just create the machine that is uh that looks fine but the minimum configuration i say is like the 16 gb memory and the 4 cpu this can also work but as we are working with the a little bit data processing i'll suggest you to go with a little bit higher version okay then if you have that then everything else is to good make sure you allow http request so that we can access it once we deploy our code and then if everything else looks good then you can just click on to the create and this will create your instance so this is pretty straightforward you won't uh, face any errors if you do then let me know in the comments i will help you out okay so this will start creating your instance and once it is done then we can move forward so our instance is created now i want to connect to this instance i can just click on to this ssh button and this will open the new window where i can you know directly start working with the instance now in the case of aws we generally had to you know download the keys then use that key to connect to the instance ec2 instance but uh, google directly provides the ssh support so you can just click on to the ssh button and you can directly start playing with the machine so this is currently establishing the connection with the virtual machine so once you are connected to your virtual machine then we need to run some commands you can just uh, write the clear to clear the entire screen and we can just start writing this command such as sudo apt get update this will update our entire os and will install all of the latest files then i want to install python so i can just copy these two commands so this will install the required python dependencies and then i will uh, install the pip so this will download uh, the get pip.py file and i can just install this pip version on this virtual machine so for that i can use pip to install some other python packages so, so what we're really doing is we are just set up up the basic python environment now if i do python 3 i can see i have the python 3.9 version installed if i quit this and let's say if i do something like sudo pip3 install pandas and i can see i can install pandas from the uh as a package okay so uh, pip works the python works properly now what we need to do we need to install mage in this virtual machine and for that we'll go to the mage 
data tool uh, this is the mage available this is the website available and i can just go to the github repository of mage and where i will find all of the installation process as you can see over here we have two different ways to install the mage one is using docker so if you have docker install you can just use this command to install it or you can use the pip to install the mage so we will go with the pip so all you have to do is just copy this and let me open my ssh command this is just write sudo pip3 install and which is mage hyphen ai and this will start installing mage uh, in this virtual machine this is pretty straightforward you don't have to worry about anything else and this will install all of the required packages to run the mage in this virtual machine so we'll just wait for that and once it is done then we can just start creating the project mage is installed on my virtual machine so now the next step is to start a project and the command for that is that mage start and your project name so i will go over here and just write mage start let's say uber t project i just hit start and this will start running the project and as you can see uh it is running on the local host 6789 so we, do, we did not get any error and we were able to run this project very easily so now let's say if i go and try to access it uh, all you have to do is go to your vm uh, yeah so go to your so so go to your v vm and click over here and you will see the public ip available uh, let me just open that so we have our vm running and if i scroll down you will see this is the internal ip uh, and this is the external ip this is what we can use over the internet you can just copy this paste it onto new browser and then the port was 6789 so i'll just copy the port name 6789 and if i enter it you will see we are not able to access our mage ui why is that happening because our instance does not accept any request from this particular port. We need to specifically tell our instance that it should allow the request from this port. So for that, what you need to do, you need to go to your instance and this is my instance and over here you will see the network interfaces. Just click, right click onto this and open this into the new tab and you will see something like this. Over here you will find the firewall rules and you will see it is allowing HTTP request. This is what we selected at the start and this is allowing access from all of these ports only. We need to create the new rule and tell this instance to accept request from the this particular port which is a 6789 and for that you need to do is go over here and click onto this firewall. Click onto this create firewall rule. And you will see something like this so i can just give the firewall name as mage access uh, description can be the same then everything else is the same over here target all instance in this network because i want to assign uh, this particular rule to the all all of the instance for now and then i want to give access from all of the ip you can put your own ip but i don't want to put my own ip because that will leak it so i will just put 000 but in your case if you want you can put your personal ip address also so that only you your ip can access the instance but in my case i'm just putting it public over here select the port so this is where we will uh, write the port name which is the 6789 um, i want to give the access to this port and if you just click onto the create tool it will create the new firewall rule uh, based on the port that that we have added this will take like few minutes and when, once that is done then we can access our mage ui using the instance so let's wait for this to finish and it is finished now if i go to over here and if i try to access it we should be able to access our mage ui so as you can see we are still not able to access the ui and there might be one reason for that is that i have made one mistake while creating this firewall rule so if you click onto this mage access again and if you go and click onto this edit firewall rule you will see we have just added 000 so this is just looking for that particular ip only for this we need to add 0000 slash 0 and if i do this and if i save my rules then i should be able to access the uh, ui the reason is that this is kind of like the range and back zero basically means you can access it from anywhere now if i run this i should be able to access the mage ui so 
this part is more of a networking concept so i don't want to go detail into this but if you are still facing the error then let me know in the comments i will help you out but mainly if you are facing this issue it might be because of the firewall rule and inside the firewall make sure you have all of these settings so add this mage access your name make sure you have all instance in this network your ip source should be 000 slash 0 and it should be the tcp and you should provide the port name once you have done this you will see the mage ui in front of your screen so this is what the project looks like so this is what the mage ui looks like now this is similar to the airflow uh, if you have done the twitter pipeline project you will have some web ui now you can create your pipeline easily over here so we are currently under the uber de project just click on to the new and i want to create the new pipeline such as standard batch pipeline and i will have all of those things directly uh, provided to me you don't have to do a lot of things by yourself such as you know create the DAGs, write code by yourself the modern data engineering tools or modern data engineering stack all of these tools that are available have all of this functionality so they already give you the basic framework all you have to do is just focus on writing your code and they will make sure that everything in place so this is what it looks like so i can have the data loader transformation exporter dbt if i want to integrate dbt if i want to write my custom code i can also do that so all of these are the code that is directly being generated and you will find some of the examples such as load titanic data if i just click onto this i will get some code this is basically extracting data from the titanic csv and doing some work so they already have some default work but in our case we want to create the pipeline from the scratch so you will have a lot of different things such as triggers runs backfill logs monitor so you can explore the ui click onto it and try to understand by yourself but for now we will just go and do the first step which is we want to load our data into this mage ui so click onto this data loader over here you have the options from mul multiple uh, sources so if you want sql r or inside the python i want to load my data from let's say api because i have directly um we have already made the our data as the public access so i can just uh write like uh load uber data if i do save and blog this will directly generate the load code for me so as you can see mage directly generated this code for us now what we really need to do we need to just pass the url or you can also pass the any api name if you have your personal api you can just pass the url over here and it will directly extract data from that so in our case we have our data available onto this google storage uber csv so directly the we have given the access to the public so you can just click onto this copy url and paste this url over here and everything else seems good and if i just click onto this button this is used to run this particular block so if i run this as you can see the timing is over here so it is running this code and it, will, it is basically trying to pull the data from our google storage to this mage instance so that we can start writing our code so as you can see we have our data available vendor id uh, pickup dot time passenger code trip distance and all of the other things so you don't have to do anything by yourself right most of the time these tools are designed in a way that you just provide the different blocks and it will do all of those things for you so this will basically load our data from the google storage to our mage ui now all of these code might seem intimidating at the first when you are seeing it but all it is doing is basically importing some of the packages then we have the function available which is accepting some parameters and as you can see we have the url we are getting this url and we are returning this as a pandas data frame so that we are able to see the output over here now this is just a loading part now what we need to do we need to transform this data based on the data model that we have created so what we will do we can just scroll below and click on to this transformer again we will have all of these templates available but in this case we will click on the generic template and write uber transformation i can just click on to save and add block and you will see the transformation block is generated again it is directly generating the code block for us so you can see it is sub importing some of the packages and we already have some of the test cases so first what we need to do we need to import pandas as pd because we will be working with the pandas data frame so once you imported the pandas then over here we have the data so whatever the data it returns over here as you can see this is returning some data uh returning pd.csv this will get sent to this particular variable which is the data so this is the output coming from the parent block as you can see the data the output from the upstream parent block so this is the first block which is the load uber csv as you can see it on the uh this tree so this will run and this will return some output and that output will get passed 
on to our second code which is this one this is a which is the transformation block so if i want to if i want to print such as let's say print data of let's say let's print vendor id okay if i print this and if i just run this you will see we will see only vendor id because what it is doing it is executing it step by step as you can see we have the vendor id available so first it runs the first block then whatever the output is given it will pass that output to the second block which is available over here and then we can again write our transformation code based on that so instead of data i want to name it as df so i just write the df as it is you don't have to change anything it is just accepting the data from the up upstream block and storing that data over here so now what we will do we will copy our function as it is as you can see i'll just copy this the transformation code that we have written inside my image box let me just structure this so first you can copy this uh let me just adjust this properly then once you have copied this part then we can just copy the dimension table part uh this is all is the copy pasting because we have already written our transformation function and then i can just copy this this part i'll you can do the same thing all you have to do is just copy our transformation code and put this in inside this function and then we will copy the strip distances you can just select it and hit on the tab to make it inside the function inside this transform function and then i'll go and copy this part and put it over here you select this make sure this is also properly indented uh, i'll copy this put it over here and uh, i'll copy this again put it over here and then i'll just copy the fact table code and put it over here so this is done so i can see all of the data is available so what we have done we have just copied our transformation code as it is and put that into the mesh transformation block and once it is done i can just for now i can just print success and at the end let's say if i want to print entire thing let's say i'll print the fact table information if i do this and if i run this uh, we will see the output as the fact table available over here so as you can see we have the fact table information and we should be able to see the success because it is returning that data now what we need to do we need to pass all of these data frame okay so we already understood right one block one single block does something and passes the output to the next block second block does something and passes the output to the next block so in the first block as you can see it over here the loader part load over data csv we are extracting the data okay and then we are converting it into the csv format and we are extracting the data and then we are converting it into the data frame and then we are passing this data to the transformation block now transformation block we have already written every all of the code about it we are transforming this data into the proper structure and creating the multiple data frames now what we need to do we need to pass this multiple data frame to the loader function and load this data to the bigquery and for that the way we do is we will pass it in the dictionary so it looks something like this we have the the key which is our data frame name then we have the data frame and then we are converting it into the dictionary format so dictionary because we can't directly pass the data frame inside the dictionary so what we need to do we need to convert this as a dictionary so for this date time dame passenger counts for all of the different data frame available in this code we are just uh having the key as a name and then we are just as a value we are just converting our data frame as a uh dictionary if you run this and as you can see once the running completes you will see this long output but what it is basically is that we have our data frame and then and what it is basically we have the key and then we have the entire dictionary as a value so as you can see this output is quite big so for that all you have to do is just click on to this button at the top and this will collapse the entire thing so we have we will just collapse this too so we have our loader and we have our transformator so once we are done with our transformation code then the next step is to load our data into bigquery this is called as a data exporter so we have loaded our data from the api then the second thing we did is we wrote the transformation function and pass the transform code in the dictionary now we can receive that data and load this data onto the bigquery so we have the data exporter available so just click on to this click on to python and 
over here i want to load my data into multiple locations so let's say i go with the big query over here i'll just write uber uh big query load okay i'll just add the block so as you can see we have the data exporter code available so all of these are the packages required and over here we have the information about the table creation and what we want to create so as you can see the code this is the table id so based on the name it will create our table then this is the config path so config path is basically the io config yaml file so if i go over here and if i open the yaml file you will see that yaml file contains the credentials to connect with the big query so uh, generally in any cloud computing platform right you need some kind of access key or the secret key or the credentials to connect to that particular service so in this case uh, if we are connecting with the aws we might require the aws access key and the secret key if we are co connecting with azure then we might requ require the access key for the azure same with the google if you want to connect to the google key if you want to if you want to connect to the google services you need the google service access key and require all of these information so where do we get all of this information you need to go to the console over here and just type uh service and api okay you will find this api and services uh just is called as the api and the services you will see something like this api and services you can just click over here and you will be redirected to this page over here click on to this credential this is where we will get the credentials to connect to the big query now click on to the create credential and over here click on to the service account so creating a service account basically means you are giving a permissions to communicate the vm with all of the other gcp services so let's say i give this name to uber let's say uber data engineering project okay and then description just copy the name as it is click on to create and continue uh this will you will have to give the rule so in this case i want to access to the big query so you can just write big query and give the admin access because i want to create table delete table and all of the other things so you can just provide that this will give the permission to our vm to run our code and you can just click on to done and you will get the service account created you can go to the service account click on to keys and click on to add key and create a new key over here we have the two options just go with the json and click on to create and this will give you one json file where all of your credentials will be stored so in my case if i open this so this is what it looks like you will get all of your credentials available over here all you need to do is go on to your mage and open this io config yaml file you will find it at the bottom over here yeah io config yaml file and you can just start pasting all of the values available inside your credentials so first is your project id so just copy your project id as it is and let me just open this and i will paste it over here okay this is your project id then this is your private key uh, this is my private key then this is my private key that was the private key id and this is my private key just paste it uh this is my email which is my service account this is my service account email make sure there is no comma at the end then we have auth uri just going to paste it over here uh token uri then auth provider this is the auth provider and this is the last one the client search search url okay this is looks good just click on command s or control s when everything looks good then you can just click on to this view pipeline and you can uh come over here so for the starters we will just do this for the one table and then we will do it for all of the different data frames that we have available so just let's just do it for the fact table so this is my project so let's just first open the big query so you can go over here and click on to big query okay uh, i'll open the big query and yeah, big query 
so this is what it looks like so you will have something like this you might not have all of this data set because i was working on this you will have your project name inside your project you have the different data set so this is a structure we already discussed you have the project id inside that project id you have your data sets and inside your data sets you have all of the different uh, tables available so this is the spotify this is a stock market data set then this is kind of like your data set that i've created and this is the uber data set that i was working previously before before this tutorial right so what we need to do we need to create a data set and to create a data set it's pretty simple just uh, click over here click on to create data set and just write let's say uber data engineering let's say i write yt and clip this as a multi-region uh, because we want to we want to access our data from all of these different region and replicate it so keep it a multi-region and just click on to create data set multi-region just 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 select the us america okay and i'll create data set already exist okay so i have this already exists okay so this is available over here i'll just copy this okay i'll just copy it and i will paste it over here and i'll just give the table name as a uh, fact table all right basic so this is all about your table and a bigquery config with the yaml file second thing is we actually want to pass the data so we are already using if exists so whenever we run this code it will replace the table as it is we don't want to append any data because we don't have data coming continually coming because we don't have the data that is continuously coming second thing is the table id table id is basically this one so this will create the table name the fact table and the df is the actual data that we want to store so we want to pass the data frame but if you remember we are getting this data over here in the json format because we, we passed our data in, inside the json format only so all of those data when we when we were running our transformation code we converted this into da json data what we need to do we need to convert this back to our data frame so while reading our data we can do that so in your exporter code you have this variable df available uh, you can just replace this as data also it doesn't matter okay so we are reading this data from our upstream and now what we will do we will just write data and our key name which was the key name was uh, in this case we want to provide the fact table so the key name was fact underscore table and i will convert this into pd dot data frame okay i will just pass something like this and i have to uh import panda so if the data frame is already available i can just write something like this data frame and this will pass the json data as uh, data frame if i run this let's see if this works or not if we get any error or not okay so if i'm running this if this runs successfully we should get table but no module named google cloud so it is not able to find the google cloud now if this happens we might have to install google cloud by running on to our uh, instance so all you need to do is go back to your instance which is this one and click on to ssh and create the new connection so in our one window the main server is running in the second window we will install the google cloud packages so all you have to do is write something like this sudo pip3 install google dash cloud okay this will install all of the required packages for the google cloud again we can also include such as cloud dash bigquery because we are also working with the bigquery so it's, it will download the bigquery package also and uh, it is download and if it is done then we can try running our exporter code again so i'll just run this and let's say if we get any error or not okay so the reason we got this error because it is not able to find the google cloud module which is not installed in our virtual machine so we have to install it and once it is installed then we can uh, run this again and see if we get any uh, output or not so as you can see bigquery is initialized connecting to bigquery is done exporting table uber data engineering uber data engineering fact table and we are getting some error for 404 not found uber data engineering is not found so it is not able to find this particular data set so we need to change our data set to the name that we created so over here uh, this is our data set um made a mistake while creating copying the name so this is my data set which is the uber underscore data engineering underscore yt so if i run this again it should work at this time okay uh, so as you can see our code ran successfully and if we go to the big query and if we refresh this let me just refresh this we should be able to see the data set and the 
uh, table that we have pushed and if I click on to this preview and check this preview you will see all of the data is being available over here as it is so this is just what we did for the fact table now we can just repeat this entire process for every data frame available inside this uh, table so we did this only for one data frame now we need to do this for all of the different data frames available inside our file so what you need to do all you need to do is do something like this uh, i will just copy this i will paste it on the top okay not over here outside this uh, okay so it is available over here and now then i can then i can write for key value in uh, which is my data data dot items okay and over here i will have the table id i want to give the table name as dot format and i will give table name as my key because we have assigned the table name as the key and if i just have to hit the tab and i will put my value over here okay so if you understood if you have the basic understanding of python what we just did we read our dictionary as it is and inside our dictionary if you remember we have the key and the value the key is our table name and the value is the actual json data but in this case what we are doing is so key we are providing key it over here and creating the entire table id dynamically and then we are providing our actual data value but we need to convert this value into data frame so we are converting it over here and then we are passing it so if i now run this let's just see if we are able to get all of the tables available on the bigquery or not so this will run and what it will do it will put each and every uh, data frame convert it and it will try putting all of those tables into the targeted uh, data set so this starts with the date time dim if it is done then it will move to the next one so we have successfully exported our data now let's just go to bigquery and see if we can see all of the data that we have uh, exported and if i open this and if i open this you will see all of the different tables that we created in the data data frame format we are able to see it over here if i click on to date time dim if i preview this you will see all of the data is available over here if i if i click on to top off you will see I will all of the location so these are the top of location id and these are the latitude longitude values available same with all of the other tables so now you can just uh, click on to this plus icon and over here you can write your query so i already have one query ready so we can just copy that and see what it looks like so let's say if you want to query one table all you have to do is do something like this right select star let me just zoom this a little bit select star from our table name so let's say i want to query our fact table so you will find inside the details you will find the table id all you have to do is just copy it and between this you just write it and let's just say limit 10 and if i run this you will see all of the different uh, columns available inside the fact table so now we can run some analytics query on top of it so I, we can start with this such as let's say if i want to get the average um fair amount based on each vendor so what i can do i can just write vendor id and over here i can just copy let's say fair amount okay i can do this and over here i just have to write group by vendor id and let's just say average and if i run this you will get the average fair amount by each vendor i can also get the total fair amount uh just do this and you will get all of this information available over here so you can run some sql queries on top of it for the analytics same way we can run more queries such as let's say select star from uh let's say we have the fact table available so i'll just say fact table a uh just to join on let's say payment okay so i'll just open this payment details click over here and paste my uh, payment table i'll just keep this as b okay uh, b uh, i want to join this on a dot let's say inside the we have the payment type id is equal to b dot 
payment type id and i want to uh, let's say extract what do i want to extract okay average tip amount average tip amount average tip amount by the tip payment so i want to extract let's say i average tip given based on the payment type because if someone is using credit card he is more likely to give more tip maybe if he is using cash he might give the less tip so let's find out okay so what we can do we can just say uh, a dot payment okay not uh, let's just say b dot payment type name the payment type name and let's just say a dot tip amount uh, i can group by group by payment name and i can just do sum we can also get the average but let's just go with the sum for now and if i run this select and run this you will see we have highest given by the credit card let's just go with the average and if i run this you will see something like this we have around highest uh, by the cash then we have the credit card and then no charge and the dispute is something uh, doesn't matter right the 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 tip amount so just like this you can you know join multiple tables and extract the value i have the assignment for you guys if you are guys watching and if you really want to you know learn all of this then here are the some of the insights that you can find such as uh this is one of the questions such as find to top 10 pickup location based on the number of trips okay this is one of the query that you can write then the second is on uh, this one which is find total number of trips by the passenger counts and then i have this one find average fare amount by hour of the day okay so you can uh, extract the insights and try to write the query by yourself if you want to learn and if you want to you know, understand about this data set so now what we have done we have done the transformation and we have loaded our data onto bigquery now after that every person requires different columns and different data so we have just provided every data inside the fact and dimension format so the actual data engineering part is over because we were able to extract this data clean that data and put the pipeline in in place and then we loaded our data onto bigquery this is where the data scientists, machine learning engineers, data analysts comes into the picture. They try to extract the information that they require and build a new table. We can call it as the analytical layer where they only pull the columns that they require and then they build dashboards on top of it. So we can write a query to extract all of this data and combine them together. And the way we write is that select, let's just say star from our first fact table. So uh, I'll just copy the fact table name and I'll just paste it over here. Okay. Uh, you can provide this that's okay this is inside this and then uh we can start extracting the required columns that we want i'll open this just click on to this and split this into the right tab let's just collapse this this is a little bit messy let me just zoom out a bit reset this okay so i'll start writing my query over here and just select the column that i really want so from the fact table what we want we want uh just just give f okay so i want f dot vendor id now i want to i want to extract date and time so what we can do is we can join the date and time table so let's just copy this let's paste it over here and date time dim and just write date dim something or just uh, just uh, let's just write d over here and let's join it on join we can do the join over here join join on let's say f dot date time id over here is equal to uh, d dot data id just like this i can start joining tables on their uh, the primary key and the foreign key this is what we did over here so first we join it on a data id second we join it on the passenger trip distance pickup location top location just like that we will join all of these tables and then we will pull the required column so i'll just copy this then we will pull the data from passenger count dim so over here i will just write let's say p p dot what do we have passenger count id and the same should be available on f uh, f dot passenger count id then i will join it for let's say what do we have next 
we have trip distance so i'll just do trip distance dim and let's say just just give t and over here uh, t dot trip distance id and let's just assign trip distance id over here also uh, let's just copy this again and put this let's say what is the next table we have read code we can do the same read code dim just just give this alias as r r read code id and i can just do the same over here and then we have what is the table name let me just pull this let me just uh yeah do something like this read code is done join on read code okay yeah join and then we have present date time done pickup location so let's just say pick up location i'll just give p uh p is already p already exists so i will give pick pick dot pick location id and the same over here let's just copy this and paste it and then instead of pick up we have drop uh, I'll just give this drop drop dot drop location ID okay then the next is drop read code is done trip distance is done top is done what is one two three six tables right we have the six one two three four or uh, pickup is done top is done payment type okay the payment is remaining so let's just copy this okay and payment type dim uh, over here i'll just write pay and pay dot payment type id same over here so we were able to get most of the tables and we were able to join what we are doing is we are just directly joining as it is now we can start picking the imp important columns from all of these tables so from uh fact table we are pulling the vendor id from let's say date time i'm interested in pulling the T E let's say inside the date time dim what do we have okay so i want to get the t pep or f i just have okay the okay d dot uh i have the drop and i want to pull t pep pick up date time so i will pull two date times from this and then i can i have what we have passengers so p dot passenger count and then i have what do we what do i need mm, passenger type trip distance so this t dot trip distance and then from rate code r dot i can have the read code id or read code name i'll just go with the name because this is more descriptive and then after that uh pick dot uh, from pick i will pull let's say pick up latitude and pick dot pick up longitude longitude okay uh, the same thing we can do this for the drop so just copy this put drop drop and instead of pick up this is right drop and drop okay and then after the drop we can have the payment the pay dot payment type name okay we can also pull the id up to you and then we have other information to pull from the fact such as f dot fair amount f dot extra f dot mta tax f dot tip amount f dot tools f dot improvement search charge and f dot total amount okay so this looks something like this and let me just remove this so again the text size is quite small because this BigQuery ui has a lot of different components but i guess uh, if i zoom this a little bit you guys can see this properly now 
uh, okay so we have like what we are doing is we are selecting all of these columns from all of these different tables let me just zoom down a bit and let me run this again uh table not found in us location drop location team is not found okay it is not able to find the drop and let's say what is the name of the table drop drop off it is drop off okay now it should be good if i run this top of drop off okay location id let's just open this and let's just see we have the drop off location instead of drop it is drop off so uh, it is let's just use this and over here also provide this and this is this drop off latitude and drop off longitude okay so instead of drop it is drop off if i run this we should be able to see the final flat file that we had initially but now what we are doing is we are pulling data from different tables so this is the final table that we have available now what we can do we can just create the actual table so create or replace table and we can put our data set name uh, over here and just write anal table underscore analytics okay as i just put the bracket at the end and semicolon and if i run this this will uh got semicolon at the end okay we already have the semicolon if i run this we should be able to get the new table on this data set so table has toll amount so we already have toll okay we have toll okay we have the duplicate uh, if i run this we should be able to get the final output okay so we have the table created if i go to the table you will see this is the table table underscore analytics kind of like the analytical layer and we can use this table to build our final dashboard so we were able to uh, create the final table so what we have just done we have just created the analytical layer now what we need to do we need to create the dashboard out of it so you can just go to just write on looker studio okay studio and this will open something like this this is free to use so you can connect it to csv file json file whatever you want and we will connect it to to the bigquery so just click on to this blank report so once you click on to blank report you need to select your data source so in this case i have the bigquery just select the bigquery if you are using it for the first time you might have to you know authorize something but i uh, just do that you just have to click on the authorize button and once it is done select your data set we have this data set uber data engineering all of the tables are available over here we need to select the table analytics and click on to add okay once you add it uh, you should be able to see your data set available uh, just click on to add to report and this will add it to the report so this is looker studio this will create one random graph this is where we can create our final dashboard now again how to create dashboard is up to you what you want to put but i will show you some of the things that i've done and then you can add your own creativity on top of it and try to build the final insights okay so let's just remove this we don't need it this is fresh let's just write uber dashboard so the first thing is uh, i just want to give the title so click on to this shape okay a rectangle and just add it over here on top of this and this just click on to this rectangle and add it on top of it so this is kind of like the box and i want to get, give the title so you just find the uber logo uber logo and just put it on the top so it looks good so let's just go with this or uh, not this one yeah okay let's go with this copy image url and you can just add click on to image by url uh just insert it and it will insert the image over here so i can just add the uber logo over here and i can change the color to the black so this looks something like this and then uh, what we need to do we need to add the filter so we should be able to you know filter out different graphs that we provide so just copy this and paste this and change the size of this over here something like this uh, again this is just a designing way up to you how you want to design your dashboard so this is the text click on to text and add such as filters uh, i'll just give text as white i'll just 
put it over here you can increase the size or text so i'll just go with the 18 if you want you can make it bold so it will look something like this so once you do that now we want to add the filters so we have different options available so if you have designed the dashboard you might know filters are basically you see on the top if you want to filter the data on set on on the dashboard you can filter it by different region different date and all of the other things so just click on the top down list i'll add at the top down dashboard if i click over here you can see i can now filter it based on the different read code name so you can add the filter for that so this is the control field for that so over here you can replace the column name so let's say i want to filter it by vendor id i can just add the vendor id and if i want to change the name i can just click on to this uh, edit button and click on to vendor id so this will change the name of the filter and just like this you can let's say i want to add copy it paste it again and i want to add let's say filter by payment type so i just drag this over here payment type and you can see i'll have the payment type filter and then i can again do the same for let's say rate code so where is my rate code rate code name i can just replace this and i can rename this rate code okay so i can have these three information and let's say i want to add the slider so i can have this slider available over here let's say i want to put the slider over below and i want to filter it by uh, let's say the distance so where's the distance trip distance i'll just pull this so i can filter it by based on the trip distance also trip distance now this is what i can do now all you need to do is copy this paste it again and create the new section and let's say i add something like this summary so inside the summary we will put some of the metrics so metrics can be let's say average amount average revenue or average trip distance it can be anything that we want to display when we actually load our dashboard so all you have to do is click on to add chart click on to the scorecard and just put it over here so this you will find in most of the companies but let's say if you are working in an e-commerce company so they might want to track total revenue total number of products that got shipped total number of product that needs to be shipped today total number of product that got returned so all of these information should be displayed as a summary so that they can take actions based on that so over here we have our scorecard so we what we can do we can just pull let's say total amount total amount and just put let's say um total revenue so this is our total revenue now i can click on to this tie and i can click on to this compact number so this will just show me the entire such as our revenue is 1.6 million and i can center this this thing so it looks good if you want to add borders you can also add borders let's say if i add borders um width of two so over here if i go to style and let's say if i add border color is black and for top two you will see the border is being added same way you can have some other things let's say the total number of trips if you want to display which is basically the record count i can just add so these are the total number of trips so again we just picked the sample data and the number of sample i took was 100k so that is the reason it is giving us the 100k count and then i can have let's say um what we can put is trip distance so average trip distance i can put something like this so average trip distance okay and then we can have more information such as let's say average fair amount so this is my fair amount i can just put average fair amount and then i can have something like let's say average tip amount okay the tip given by particular passenger so tip amount i can just put average tip amount something like this this is sum just click on to this average and you will get the average tip amount just like this we can have more information added so again it's up to you what kind of metrics that you want to show this is just a test data so i'm just showing you on the high level what can be done it's your creativity what you need to put onto this let's say if you want to display the maps of all of the pickup location where it actually happened so what you can do you can click on to this add field okay the display on the map is done by the latitude and the longitude column so let's say pick up location i create the new field and i can what i can do i can click 
write contact concat so we can create the calculated fields inside this dashboard so if you want to create the new field you can do that and i can just write pick up latitude okay and comma something like this pick up longitude if i do this this is the syntax to do that if i save this and this will create the new column over here which is our pickup location again i'm not deep diving into the dashboarding because this is not a dashboarding tutorial but i'm again adding this on top of our entire tutorial so that you guys can have the understanding of end-to-end -end project and how it works okay so i'm trying to go a little bit faster for this part again you can explore this tool by yourself but if you want i can create the detailed tutorial around visualization in future so just let me know click on to add chart click on to bubble map you can have the heat map whatever the map that you want to display let's say we go with the bubble map just select this entire thing as it is over here and invalid column just add your pickup location and this will load our chart over here so after you add the pick location click on to this edit button and convert this into the geo location and the format is the latitude longitude just click over here and you will see one bubble popped up over here you can see all of those pickup location are being getting displayed all these bubbles are available over here now let's say i want to track uh, this based on different vendor id so i can just pull and put the tooltip over here onto the vendor id so this will give me two different information for one for two different vendors so these are the two different vendors now i want to understand this particular thing based on different payment type or the record record code that we have so let's say i'll go with the record code name and this will color these bubble based on the different record code that we have so you will see once it is loaded uh, we'll we will see all of this into the different colors so as you can see we have the standard rate on this area then on this area we have the negotiated fare let me just oh, make it big then we have around the yellow jfk on this area and then we have the group right somewhere over here so again you can play with this uh, uh by your understanding and try to you know put different columns and gain some insights so just like this you can play with this dashboard and then let's say if i want to add some charts on top of this also so what i can do i can just uh, copy this paste it over here and let's say i add some charts and i can display different information so let's say if i add bar chart I can just add it bar chart over here and I want to display information about different rate code. So where is my rate code? I can add it on the dimension and the metric is the total sum, but uh, metric is my total amount. So this is currently sum. I can just get the average amount and this will give me the information about the total amount based on the different rate code. And I can just do the same thing, copy this and instead of, instead of rate code, I can have the payment so we can understand the credit card is giving us the highest revenue then we have the cash then no charge and the disputes amounts are like this so again it's up to you how you want to design this dashboard i just show you the one of the ways where you can do that you can create multiple sections according to your understanding and create the final dashboard so i leave it up to you guys uh create something good i hope you guys so i hope you guys create something good and make sure you tag me on to linkedin and twitter once you do that so completing this tutorial is a big task just recording this tutorial took me around four hours so i understand if you guys reach at this point this might be a hell of a journey but if you did reach to this part of the tutorial that means you you are different than most of the people who watch this video because most of the people might have just started watching this video and gave up in between somewhere because they couldn't go forward with that or they faced error and they didn't want to but you did not do that you reached to this section and you were able to build your final dashboard so first of all congratulations with that and i hope you build something new this so what i'm expecting from you guys is that instead of using this uber data you pick some of the other data set i already have videos but go online try to find some other data set and replicate the same thing that you learn in this throughout this video Try to build a data model, try to write your own code, deploy this onto Mage and then create the table onto BigQuery and build the final dashboard. So I showed you the entire journey of a data engineering project, not a data engineering project, but a modern data engineering project because we use the new modern data stack tool and we were able to build our final dashboard. So I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, then make sure you hit the like button. This helps this channel to grow.
so congratulations on completing this project if you actually did complete this project then you can go on to linkedin or twitter tag me there and write a post so that way i will know you completed the project from start to end and you can also comment it out what you think about this project so next part if you want to learn by yourself then what you can do is that instead of using the uber data set you can go and pick the different data set available from the kegel aws open data i already have the video on this so you can click over here and understand about the different data sets available and build your own page so you already understood how to build a fact and dimension table so start with that and then write your transformation code according to the dimension table you built and then you can deploy your code onto the mage and then you upload your data onto bigquery and build a new dashboard and if you do that then also tag me on the linkedin so that way i will know you actually did something by yourself so this is about this video i hope you found this video helpful and if you did then again don't forget to like this video the creation of this video takes a lot of effort it took me around six to seven hours just for the recording and before that i have to research prepare and execute this project by myself and then create the video so i will highly appreciate if you can like this video and comment something so it will reach to as many as people thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video